Hi everyone, this is Akio from the Essential Guide to Digital Jewelry Design. And today we have Eva and myself and showing uh, how to create a balloon letter and using a sub tools in a Rhino 8. Uh, if you use a Rhino 8, Rhino 7, so we have a sub -tool, uh tools uh, rooted in the Rhino. Yes. Uh, this is by um, request of one of our subscribers called Zerba uh, Kerbazi. Kerbazi asked if we could um, give a tutorial on creating balloon letters um, for, for necklaces. So we hope you see this and we hope you enjoy the tutorial. We did this just for you. And um, as, as Akia mentioned, if you don't have Rhino 7, you can do this. Uh, if you don't have Rhino 8, you can do this in Rhino 7 with the sub D tools as well. Um, it'll be uh, the same tools um, available in Rhino 7. Um, okay, so uh, let's have a look here. We wanted to share with you this, uh, this tutorial. Also, our book, Essential Guide to Digital Jewelry Design. Um, if you haven't had a look at it yet, or you are curious, we would encourage you to go over to Amazon uh, if you want to print it hard copy, or you can look on Akio's website, um, alternatively Gumroad or my website for the PDF versions. And um, the model packs are available on Gumroad. And those are complementary and uh, uh, quite useful if you're going to do the tutorials. Okay, yes, we are showing a lot of a uh, jewelry uh, modeling technique using a rhino and a grasshopper, hmm. and also we describe something about uh, somebody as uh, somebody also. Yeah. All right. Okay. Uh, Eva. I'm going to share the screen. Uh, we want to look at the. Screen one, no, screen two. And what we've got um, as examples that we're going to use to just figure out what we want to, to do with our letters is a, a full alphabet. We just went looking on the internet for um, balloon letters. And uh, what we see here immediately is, is that um, these letters are quite bubbly. They have creases in the corners. Um, they yeah, flow. It's, not, it's not that easy. I mean, the, as easy as it, as it looks, but the, when you look carefully, yeah, there is a creases and uh, there is a edge and uh, yeah, um, exactly. So it's not like a, you know, curve extrusion type of the letters no no this is a, a slightly different approach when it comes to to modeling and rhino um can't just do this with a, a sweep braille um with a sweep braille tool with your nerves uh that's why we chose the sub d tools um the reason i downloaded the alphabet was so we could have a look at the letters um and the letters we're going to use today uh, to start with are R H I N O. Surprisingly enough, I know. Yeah. So um, if we look at the letters that we have here on this alphabet, we'll see they're very simple. Um, the proportions are very simple. The shape is very simple, if possible, or is in in one line. Um, so here the R is 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 almost like one one single smooth line um the i is a very traditional i the n as well and the o is just short of being a, a full circle it's a little bit oval so let's open up rhino we have rhino eight and yes thank okay, you let's get started. want to say something oh, no 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 let's get started okay Cool. Um, so first things I'm going to do is just change the name of the layer to curves and I'm going to start with a red color so I can see what I'm doing because I'm half blind. And um, 
we are we are going to work with letters about 22 millimeters. Uh, uh, we we decided that we were going to make the letters around about 22 millimeters in height, or let's say about 24 millimeters in height, right? Yeah. So, mm -hmm. um, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create a rectangle just as a box, so that I like have my box. Mm -hmm. uh, exactly. So I have a little bounding box for my for my for my size. I'm going to use the center as the point to draw from and zero. Uh, as my zero, my my my, my center center dimension, and um, my other corner that doesn't really matter so much. It's more the height that's important, and that's where we're going to use twenty two, um, twenty two, twenty four, twenty two, yeah, twenty two millimeters. Mm -hmm. Okay, so here we have a feeling of the size in height of our letters. Um, the next thing is we can make this just a little bit broader. I'm just going to use the gumball tool to draw it out. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to start drawing the outlines of our, our letters. So starting with the R, I'm going to use a simple... Um, so you're going to simple, trace it? Simple interpolated curve tool, okay. a simple word. Oh, are you going to trace the uh, the image or? Uh, we could do. Actually, mm -hmm. that's maybe not such a bad idea. Um, in surfaces, we can use a picture a picture plan tool. Mm -hmm. Yep. Um, just go and fetch my drawings. Uh, Draw from the bottom corner up. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's good. Yep. Yeah, so that's much and easier to trace it. Yeah. So here we go. We start. I'm just going to lock that by clicking on the lock tool in the standard, uh, standard toolbar. Mm -hmm. And now go over to interpolated curves. And just starting around about, not right at the bottom, but close to the bottom, um, I'm going to trace the shape of this R and try to keep it as one uh, um, uh, one continuous curve. There we go. So the bottom curve here can be a little bit more, wow, I'm really not used to doing things in this resolution. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> okay, I can actually delete that point. It's not even necessary. I can even delete that point too. This needs to be a fairly straight, straight line. And in fact, we can join these two curves, click both of them, go to join, and we can move these points back a touch, like that. Okay. Uh, still edit a few corners here. Make that curve just a bit straighter. Yep, that looks great. Mm -hmm. Okay, it's kind of following the, the R Quite nicely there, right? Yeah. Okay. Yep. It's very nice. Mm -hmm. So why why I'm not taking the endpoints right to the edge is because when we use the um, sub D piping tool, which you'll find over here, where okay, you can find it in your toolbar on the side, um, and we add caps, it will create a dome so yeah, it will actually extend, extend it, it. Mm -hmm. exactly yeah. so just to to show as an example it's radius can turn the radius up here to about no five is too much uh it's got three 
still too much, 2.5. Yes, that's yeah, better. That's right. mm -hmm. Cap, yes. And enter. Okay, so let's turn our shaded viewport on. And let's at this point start adding some more layers. So here we're going to start putting our letters into a letters layer. Change the object layer. And I'm going to unlock our background image and I'm going to put it in another layer as well for that picture plan. Yes, Akio, tell me. Oh, no, it looks good. Yeah, uh, to me, the object has to be like a black color because the black should see the, the you know, geometry much better. Yeah, clearly. So I don't use like a red or like a brew or, yeah, it's it's hard to uh, to show the, you know, the body that uh, object. Yeah, that looks good. Yeah. All right. Now, so... Yeah. Yes. What we can do at this point is we can also make it ghosted, I think, which is mm -hmm. not bad. And um, we will, I will start editing the, the the shapes of the objects to perfect them once I've got all of the, the letters lined up. So the next letter we're going to put in is the H. So let's bring the H down here. And I'm going to do the same thing. At this time, not with a continuous um, line, just and the edge is going to be an interesting actually. Yeah, it's a little different from other letters because you see, it's not like a, it's not going to blend in to the uh, the both sides. Like a, you know, the middle one is looks kind of independent. Yeah, it's been it's been cut off, but we're still gonna pipe that as one continuous letter because mm -hmm. at least with the sub D tools, we can we can flatten those areas out. Exactly. So, yeah. Well, at the end of that, it's your design. Yeah, you don't have to be follow that, uh, you know, the image. Ah, we could even make that a little bit bigger, huh? Mm. 2.5, let's see, 3, maybe even, yeah, 3. The struts, I'm going to add a few more struts in. And, yeah, that's good. Mm -hmm. and put that in the letters layer. Um, we will have to bridge these objects together, yeah. Oh, okay. yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, you uh, can also, yeah, also bridge it instead of, yeah, creating that uh, pipe there. There's so many options you can do. Yeah, okay. I like the sub D because you can just, you know, create uh, select the faces and you can make it longer, you know, um, you know, change the sizes so quickly and easily. Yes, yeah, uh, does make it very, very simple to 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 change to change your mind. Mm. Um, I'm just I'm just thinking about the old T splines right now. So I remember the piping tool for the old T splines. The piping tool for the old T splines, you could mm. um, you could literally choose the thicknesses of your piping on different parts of the of the of the curve. Do you remember? Yeah, yeah, I remember. Yeah, uh, it's just yeah. So. Uh, in case if you know don't know the T spline, T spline was the plugin uh, for the Rhino, which does the similar things uh, like a, a you know organic modeling like this using a faces, vertices, edges, 
yeah, so it stopped to uh, until like a, a Rhino five and then uh, Rhino seven. So Rhino, uh, yeah, adapted this uh, uh, like a T splines uh, similar function in a Rhino seven, which is you know everybody's waiting for. So yeah, but it's, some people still <laughs> use a Rhino five and uh, uh, T splines uh, actually. Really? Oh, yeah. Uh, actually, I, I think um, I may. I'm going to change it to strut one. I may have. It's better yeah, if they're the, separate yeah. objects like there is on the H. Right? Yeah, there is some tool that uh, which is missing in the Rhino. Uh, there is some tool that I uh, use a lot in a T splines and which is not there in that Rhino 8 sub D tool. So it's still, you know, I think a work in progress. Yeah, even though, you know, we can use the sub D tools in a Rhino set, Rhino 8. I know, but uh, sub D tools is a, is a huge improvement in Rhino. Mm -hmm. yeah. Really, it, it was it it was, um, it was about time actually that they, because yeah, yeah. they always had the technology to do it, um, and it was such a, I mean, it's, it's, it's such an, a uh, super part of the nerve modeling is that you can, you can work like this, um, I. Uh, I've always had problems working with poly modeling. I don't know if you if you do poly modeling, Akio. What uh, poly poly modeling, uh, like poly surface modeling oh, instead okay. of yeah, yeah, yeah. modeling? Mm -hmm. I don't know if you ever do poly modeling, but I I, I, I suck badly at poly modeling. Like it's something I'm it, I find very unintuitive to to work with. But then there's people that are just natural at at Poly modeling, it, it comes naturally to them, uh, and they they find nerves modeling to be clunky and heavy. So, uh, but the thing with the sub D tools is that it's exactly the the middle the middle point between um, poly modeling and nerves modeling. Yeah, I mean, it you know, the two. yeah, the Rhino modeling is. Uh, I think you know you have. To, I always you know take people and myself too so you have to kind of map out you know how you're going to do uh, ahead of time and then uh you know you kind of ha uh, have the orders yeah but so it's, it's not that really intuitive so but the sub d is you know uh you can kind of go along and push them but you don't like this way you know and then so you see the object and then you can still uh you know that edit uh, while you're modeling, and uh, which is very, very intuitive, yeah. So, if your oh. curves, if your curves are, are close enough to one another, as you've noticed, um, if your curve, if your curves are, are on top of each other, like uh, for instance here, uh, let's just do it with the eye. Um, the sub D. I think will try to connect your objects. You yeah, see that? so that, that's kind of nice, nice too. Yeah, seventy two. It's like a it's smooth transition. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the between the the, the multi. Uh, yeah, you can do multi pipes. Like and branching. that corner will be very smooth. So I like about that function. Yeah, it's you can yeah you can do a nice branching like that. But this is not what we what we want for these letters. But uh, it it's good to know. Um, and our final letter will be the, the, the O. Okay. And the shape on that is just any, we can use a, a, a ellipse command. Maybe. Yeah. Uh, funny enough though. Well, yeah, we'll take care of that. You've got that flat, you've ah. got this flat bit over ah. here, but I we'll see. take yeah, we'll take care of that when we when we when modeling. Yeah, you so, can just push that edge. That edge. Yeah. yeah, the letters out. Um, 
Yeah, interesting yeah. to see how the um, those balloons made. Okay, so we've yeah. got the basic shapes. Okay, let me switch off our balloons in the back. Okay, and I'm gonna at this point switch off the curves as well. Just pull that into the middle. And now I'm going to refine these letters a bit so that they're a bit more roundish and more or less the same, more or less the same size. Okay, so at this point, I'm I'm just going to use my shift control, uh, and I'm going to select, double click, and select my edge loops. Mm -hmm. I'm going to pull that up to round that area up a bit. So I'm just going to work on each sub D. Spread that around evenly. Those, those edge loops. There we go. This one over here should be a little bit higher up. And that one a bit further out. Yeah, I love the way that the, how we can edit. Yeah. It's... Yeah, push and pull and yeah, adjust, make some uh, subtle adjustment. Yeah, for that, the subtitles are, are magnificent. Mm. Yeah, it's really it's a real game changer. Yeah, it's a totally different approach. Yeah, and that R is starting to look a little bit less broad. Mm -hmm. Yeah, look at it from the side. Okay, I'll bring this up. Now, at this point, there where you see the letters are kind of crimped and um, I don't think it's on the R per se, the R hasn't got a, a crimp. It's just here that it's uh, ah, it's flat over there, actually. Um, oh, okay. Yeah. So wait a second. Let me bring that up. And let's see if we can add an edge loop in there. So you're going to go to the sub D insert sub D edge loop, mm. and select that and pull that down. Put on ghosted view, so I can select yeah, that, nice. select that edge. And switch off our snaps. Points on. Let's have a look at what's happening on those points. And from the other side, it's a little bit confusing. Here we go. working with points is great as well um so it's kind of crucial that the, how many segments you want to do uh divided to the whole the pipe i mean you can always insert the extra edge or you can delete the edge if you don't need it but uh, um yeah you have to kind of figure it out how many segment you wanted to have right yes exactly and generally you 
when you start out, try to use less segments than too many. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. Yeah, it's like a contour point and a nerves, uh, nerve surface. Yeah. Exactly. Um, here on this on this R over here, I'm going to add a crease. I want to mm -hmm. see if that takes care of that. That yeah, it looks like a balloon. Yeah, balloon yeah. has a uh, the crease uh, where it turns. Yeah. So. So we want it on a hundred percent. Uh, yeah, maybe. Yeah, I love that the new uh, uh, the function in Rhino 8, the sub D, you can, yeah, you can adjust. Is that the new in the Rhino, set, Rhino 8, right? So, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. It's the, you can adjust the weight of the of the crease, yeah? Exactly. That's, yeah, because before it was, you know, a crease or no crease, so there was no between. So now we can kind of have a subtle, cre uh, subtle uh, crispness. To the edge, which is a great. Ah, I, I mean, there's a soft crease and the hard crease. A hard crease would be kind of one hundred percent. Yeah. Yeah. This was the, the hard crease that I just edge. used. I just used the hard crease, but it's not, mm -hmm. not, quite. Uh, what are you trying to do? Ah, I wanted to straighten that. I want to straighten this. Um, so just uh, I think uh gonna have to use another treatment for that. Um, so, what would you suggest here, Akio? If I wanted to straighten this out against the side on the left here, what would you do? Oh, the straight, oh, straight instead of like a, a, this curving? Uh, um, curving? Let's have a look at the R. Like, um, let me see. This, this flat, this flat ah, edge. Of the okay. Uh, maybe extrude the edge, maybe. So it was straightened. Yeah. So you select ah. the edge. Yeah. And then press the, oh, oh no, I mean, yeah. So, you control shift and select that edge and uh, uh, grab that the uh, extrusion dot. Yeah, and uh, kind of extrude it. Just, just with the gumball, I think we'll do it. Yeah, uh, gr grab that. Just that, with a gumball? Uh, yeah, with a gumball. Yeah, uh, not, the, not the arrow. Uh, isn't that, yeah, so isn't the extrusion dot? Uh, maybe not. So, yeah, like that. No, yeah. no. Oh, oh, or. You know, with the gumball, uh, can you select and zoom it in, zoom in the top viewport? Yeah. Uh, yeah, top viewport. Uh, and then you grab that the red handle to this uh, one. Grab... Oh yeah, yeah. So yeah, so that's the one way. Oh no. Uh, undo. So you grab okay. the edge. Uh, undo. Yeah, grab the edge and then grab grab that the red handle and snap to the uh the middle dot on the gumball. No, no. Um, yeah, grab, grab it, and bring it to the right, and snap to the uh, dot in the middle. The, the, you mean this? Yeah, right, this? right there. You know, yeah, grab there. Yeah. Yeah, and then grab to the, uh, uh, grab to the, uh, oh, yeah, grab into the dot in the middle. Oh, you passed it. Or yeah. Or, or you can click, click the handle again, a uh, red handle. Yeah. Uh, red, red square, click the zero, yeah. uh, type zero, uh, click it, type zero, I guess. Yeah. Zero, enter. Yeah. Uh, doesn't do it. Oh, I saw it's it flattened a little bit. Ah, but that's that's good. Wait a second. Yeah. So if we had to go and give this a hard crease now, no, it's not doing it. But your idea, your previous idea was a better one, and that was the extrusion. extrusion. That's perfect. Yeah. Um, we don't exactly want this to be sticking out like that, but that's easy enough to fix. So what we want is a yeah. If you have a uh the f yeah face over there, yeah, we can straighten it. But um... that's working. 
Ok. Or, you know, uh, turn on the control points and then do like a set X, Y, Z, and then there will be straightened maybe. I don't know. That's another way I would do. Um. Yeah, but but it, it's working for now. But uh, uh, yeah, there is a little crease in the bottom, so you have, maybe want to do, I don't know, get rid of it or. Um, the crease. Uh, where do you see the crease? Sorry. Uh, no, not the crease. Um, like a bump. Um, so right. Uh yeah, the bump on the bump on the on the on the on the top and the bottom. Yeah. So that. edge you have to do something with that edge maybe yeah you can move the edge right next to it yes this one e, uh, this edge. Uh, not that edge i mean the art that right, right side um that goes like right diagonal right to left this one No, you no, mean that on the on the left, on the left, uh, no, yeah, the down, uh, yeah, no, the right next to it, the edge. This one. No, that down, one down, that, that one. one. Yeah. Yeah. That one needs to be moved, move it over a little bit because it's yeah had a little. Yeah, 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 yeah. That one, yes, 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 it does. Yeah. Oh, yes. okay. I'm unintentionally selecting things as well here. Okay, so there we go. Yeah, I mean, I found the tab D is so easy to learn, and uh, but uh, when it comes to the point that you have to uh, edit, yeah, it takes time, and then uh, it, it it's harder to do. Yeah, so take, I mean, the uh, tools are uh limited, you know, limited tools you can uh, edit. But it's all up to you. It's up to us to 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 use it. Yeah, to in order to make it the perfect shape that you want. Yeah. Okay. There we go. I think that's mm -hmm. yeah. That looking, looks mm -hmm. that looks good, huh? Mm -hmm. Uh, maybe still move it a little bit over, turn a little bit straighter. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's even better. Mm -hmm. Better. Yeah. And then this could maybe go up a bit more. The only disadvantage is that you can't select things inside other things here. Um, what do you mean? Uh, what, what do you want to do? Select? Oh, the no, edge? Just, um, the edge, yeah. If it's if it's overlapping a little bit, it's a bit hard to get hold of. Okay, but that's good. Um, okay, so if we go over to the edge, this one's a little bit less complicated. Yeah, you know, we just need to select these two end bits and literally just squash them. Mm-hmm. And uh bring them bring them in voila okay uh same with h let's have a look at the h later the two sides are quite consistent on the sides So it's literally this little guy in the middle that's sticking out. So let's have a look here. Okay. Um, yeah, but it looks, uh, when you go to the viewport, it looks too pointy in the top maybe, no? Mm -hmm. I think what we need to do there is is create another edge. Uh, 
right now the edge loop huh yeah or you uh, can just put uh select the top vertice and a, a bottom vertice and then just a squish it a little bit uh then it's gonna be um okay. then it's gonna be too well i i would but then yeah that's not exactly what it's supposed to look like though huh? oh okay yeah, yeah okay. so um i would i would rather go with adding a, a, a an edge loop in to create a bit more of a um a squarish profile mm -hmm. so now yes now i would take the top and the bottom edge like you said and squish them but we've got the ones on the sides that that okay that so that it doesn't become too 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 um too flat uh if that makes sense what i'm saying well now they're starting mm -hmm. to no, this doesn't look right. These look like buttocks. It's not working. Uh, we need a bit more of a squarish profile on this. Yeah, um, or, you know what I'm. Uh, it's when you see. I think when we do the the um, the pipe, I don't know. We have a control of. Um, yeah, see, we have uh, edges running on a top, so we can do the kind of the I don't know the face is running on the top so it's like a rotating a little like a 25 degrees so that you may have more control maybe oh but the yeah but that looks kind of look like a balloon a little clear yeah that's starting yeah that's looking it just needs a little bit more uh it definitely needs a bit more more subdivisions mm. um and this needs to be out a little bit more. Oh, as yeah. Well. That's the working. And I think. Um, I have to zoom into the. Here we go. Interior of the balloon. And bring those. Yeah, like that. Mm hmm. Like that, yeah, yeah, that yeah. looks much, yeah, that's good. No, too extreme though, wait, too maybe too extreme, too extreme, huh? Um, I think that looks good because at the end, yeah, at the end, we can uh make it, yeah, like a union, I mean, the to the nervous surface, yeah, I think that looks good. And the eye goes throughout. So here we're going to do a bit of a bridging. Mm -hmm. So I wonder if we shouldn't have created the, the uh, to delete that. Um, we have one, two, three, four sides, four. right? Uh -huh. So if we want to bridge it to the to the sides here, we need to also yeah. subdivide this or the extrude same, it. So we have yeah, the same same number. Um, we need to subdivide. So let's. I might have to subdivide the whole object, but let's see. Okay, so let's delete. This, 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 and this. Okay, so we've the got a whole four, four, four faces. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. So we've got your one, two, three. No, no, it's too many. One, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. No, okay, no, that's not going to work. Uh, what if we just delete these? One, two, three, four, five, six. Uh, so, and then that one is uh, one with the four, right? So four and yeah. six, yeah, it wouldn't work. So, um, no. 
so what we could do let's have a look um in set i mean you just want to bridge the bottom and the top without having a middle no so it doesn't look that like a, a what we wanted to i mean oh it you don't want to look at the uh you wanted to look like a sections yes um sorry i wanted to look like oh, a okay. no no i was saying that the uh yeah unless you wanted to look like a kind of age but uh you can also but it looks too smooth maybe no just to take the delete, delete the middle uh bar and then just uh uh well we have to change the faces but uh and uh, create a new point. cylinder right yeah. oh. but no without the cylinder so we're going to bridge top and bottom just the top and bottom um yeah so we, without without having that one but the, we have to change that the face uh what do you think i would either go with making this entire cylinder subdivided mm -hmm. like that yeah um so subdividing the entire cylinder um so deleting the ends on both sides but how many edges do we have that the cylinder now after stuff divided? Four, one, two, three, four. Two on the top, two on the bottom. But if we subdivide it, we have the we end. have eight, yeah. and that's perfect because then what? Oh we yeah, can do... it went use one, two, three, four, five, six. Exactly. But the other one is we can, six. We can uh, subdivide these. Uh, We can subdivide this. Yeah, subdivide or can... or like a oh yeah yeah or like no, an I... insert point so that the particular face you can just divide it. Yeah. Ah, that's another option. Mm -hmm. Um, so let's check the bridge. Uh. So. Select first edges to bridge. Okay. Enter and select. Oh, here you go. And now I yeah, just it, need. Yeah, it bridged, right? Yeah, but it bridged it perfectly, but in in actually yeah, yeah, yeah. exactly it See? probably would have made more sense to 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 create three um separate cylinders for the eye. Uh -huh. And uh, in this case, what we could do you now is take the eye and literally create symmetry. Right. The middle. Exactly. Yeah, and the uh, x axis. So our x axis would be yeah. you can just click the uh either x axis and uh yeah voila maybe change the x axis to being a bit higher up. There oh, we go. Okay. There we go. Yeah, exactly. Okay, so that would have been easier just making three cylinders now instead of the way that, that I went about it, which was a bit sluggish and, and, and silly. Um and then pull these ah is there a way in which one could work threefold in 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 rhino uh, in in uh, um uh threefold hmm? so what what is it um three i think what is possible to work with three axes uh symmetry three axis symmetry in um Three axis symmetry. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. But, the, but we have to do one at a time. Yeah, I think uh, x axis, and then we have to do y axis. I guess no. I think that's how I do it. So yeah, exactly. So now when you did it, so you. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So now you. Um. 
you uh, can sort of reflect and then you can do uh, on a, you know, the middle of the cylinder, so the that cylinder. you can do right down left, yeah. Yeah, so we can kill the symmetry by right clicking on right symmetry. Uh -huh. And now we use the symmetry again to create an axis symmetry through the middle. Yeah, exactly. Just use our object snap. Okay, yeah. now we work on that. And let's have a look at our eye. So our eye is, is pretty round up here. And for instance, this over here and here goes in a bit. And it's a bit flatter on the top and bottom. Mm. So, so for instance, this or better said, this point and this point need to come out of it. Yep. And this point and this point need to go in a bit like that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yep. And yep. this and this needs to also go in a bit and maybe like that, like that. Mm hmm Okay. Yep, looks and good. That looks okay, huh? Okay. Um, okay, then I think the eye is done. Mm -hmm. What do you think? Yeah, it looks good. Yep. Make it a bit smaller. Actually, no, the, the sizes, the off sizes work nicely. And then we go on to the N. Um, which is underneath here. And the M is the same as the H. There's a middle bridge oh, here that squeezed, okay. squeezed down with two, with two sides that are very similar. Here. I'm actually wondering if these should come out a bit to make it look more balloony on the, on the, on the edge points like that. Hey, mm -hmm. um, and okay. So, same thing with the N. Um, yeah, and it's a little tricky. So I'm you want to crease, crease over there? Yeah, the end is going to be a bit tricky, but um, but can we um insert the oh, yeah, 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 that's oh, okay. I'm just going to move this, yeah, in like that. Uh -huh. Move that out and rotate it a bit like that. And like you said, then then finally crease it as well, because that's mm -hmm. that that's what will add the the. Okay. It is this. No, uh, where is it? Oh, I'm getting completely lost here. Where am I now? Ah, there I am. I want that point. Yeah, like that. Mm. Yeah? Yep. And then, like you said, a, a crease this 
Now I wonder if we can just crease that or if we have to just squeeze it down. Um, uh, it's not going to work with a crease. We're going to have to um, maybe do the same thing we did with the middle of the H and just uh, subdivide this whole. Oh, okay. To make it, yeah, more yeah. double. Mm -hmm. uh, there we go. And now we can. Yeah, so now, yeah, so you have a more edges, so you can kind of rotate it, bring it, and then we can bring it, the edge down to make it like a crease. Yeah. make it yeah squeeze it um can just rotate that a little bit bring that up and this needs to be No, no, that's not really. Hmm, mm -mm. that's not working so great, huh? Wait, how does the edge look here? It's smaller. Let's see what we can yeah. do. Next. So you wanted to make it straight, right? Over uh, at the uh, at the end. Yeah. Okay. Do you? Uh, I don't know. Can you hide this uh uh cylinder on a running vertical, on the on the right, uh this, on the right this, or left? Yeah. So uh, this, that. um, yeah. That oh yeah. Just to hide hide that the object. Um, no, I cannot because they're connected. So oh, what I can do? Oh, you can. Maybe that? I can lock them. Oh, okay. You I just want to see either. it. Oh, why well, you cannot? Uh, so it's it's all the one piece. It's all one piece, yeah. So, oh, okay. like we had with the eye, uh, what we'd have to do is actually recreate the N as um, a separate object. Um, what I can do is I can just delete these cylinders. So I could literally. Go in and delete. Uh, or how do we do it with a multi pipe to make it smoother and then we make a crease over there? No, it doesn't work like that. Well, let's try that. I'm going to delete those. Let's start again. I can join the end up. Yeah, so move it yeah closer. Exactly. And then let's see what what transpires from that. And let's do a, a pipe on that. It's not really giving a very good result. Let's bring the struts uh, up. Okay, but we have to uh, add more. Oh, okay. So uh, right there, I see. Um, add more sections, no? Um, yeah, I'm, I'm adding more struts. Um, okay. um, the problem is that it doesn't deal well with the curve coming in at a point that's not in point for the other curve. Got um, it. Okay. But let's rather do it like this. I, I'm almost tempted to take the H and take this middle point and just yeah. Mm -hmm. Do that. Mm -hmm. Okay. Let's try it like this instead. And let's try struts, three struts. Okay. Yeah. 
there. And so same yeah, problem. So now, but... Yeah, so now no works, right? Oh well with more subdivisions it works better, but we still have more or less the same same problem. Um in that we are still stuck with a um I don't know if it's really such a problem. I think it's just because we're both perfectionists. Um <laughs> Most people will probably look at this and say, oh, it's fine, it looks just okay. And just bring that down. Okay. And maybe stretch that out. Yeah, that's it. That's it. That's working. Yep. And rotate this. Yes. Did it make a sound? Pardon? Did it make it flat? Yeah. Oh, okay. It's kind of working now. That actually kind of works, but I'm I'm still going to flatten this out a little bit more, the, the center of the mm -hmm. flatten it like that. There. That's better. Mm -hmm. Should work. Yeah. Yeah, that works. Okay. Sorry, if I sound like I have a lunatic here in the house, it's because <laughs> my son is playing online games uh, and he, is, uh, really? he gets real excited. Oh, I don't uh, hear anything. You don't hear it? No. <laughs> He's, uh, um, I'm not sure what they're playing. Some fantasy game. <laughs> uh, okay. Mm. The last one to go would be the H, I uh, the, the, the O. Mm -hmm. And for this one, I just pulled my top view out of. It's not really a perfect. That's looking better, right? Mm. Smoother, yeah. Definitely. Yeah, that's better. Let's make it a bit smaller. Okay. So, well, we've just taken a good half an hour to. Okay. You, you're going to make a crease, crease on a, um, the O, or that's okay? Yeah, I think what we're going to do is we're going to crease, we crease the R and we crease the O. Mm -hmm. And uh, that, that, and put the little skirt around our letters and um, that should that should really give a good idea of how to how to get these little balloon letters looking more more balloony. Let's go into red trace viewports. I just wanna I love it when it doesn't have any texture on it. Yeah, it's kinda of hard to see. It looks amazing. It 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 looks like some sort of a a drawing that's been slightly erased by an eraser. Mm -hmm. And let's put a little bit of a metal. Texture on it so we can see what the... What just happened? Sorry, go back to the red trace again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. they're looking, they're looking yeah, rather cute. Mm -hmm. Yep. Okay, that's that's working nicely. So oh, now I like the R. Yeah. Oh, I mean, I like everything. Yeah, that's nice. It comes out very nice. And now to do the creases. Um, we're just going to subdivide this a few times. Mm -hmm. And with the subdivision, you can take it even, even higher in subdivision if you want it even more detailed. I'm going to take one subdivision off 
and this is where I choose my edge loops. This is the simplest part, actually. You just take every second edge loop mm -hmm. and really just there where you know there's going to be a crease in the metal, so yes, or a crease in the balloon. There we go. And I'm going to uns I'm going to deselect the the outside the outside parts of the lines. Yeah, exactly, because it's only uh, inside to be exactly. Creased. We just need the we just need the inside inside parts to be creased, not the not the outside parts. Precisely. And I need this one here. Oh, 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 no. oh, you lost it. Okay. Yeah. Oh, no, wait. Uh, it looks like I actually didn't undo un unwittingly with my fingers. That's one thing that I have to say, I would love it if Rhino would add is, but they do have it, it's right here, in fact, before I say anything stupid, there are named selections. So here I can click on my named selection, I can say creases R01. There we go. Oh, okay. Now I know that it saved that selection. Right, so right. I I go if and I stick happens. my yeah. If I stick my my fingers again in the wrong place and I lose my selection, I I just need to double click on my on my selected uh, see like that. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that happens all, all the time to me too. And voila, you just uh, double click. Brilliant. There we go. Okay. This time, third time lucky. It's not going to happen. There so, we go. In case, yeah, if you wanted to deselect something, press Control or Command on the Mac, and then select the object so that the the object will be deselected. Um, yeah, yeah. And with the heart crease, all I'm going to do is just move it a bit in. Ah, look at, look at that. And a bit, love it. And a bit up. And there we go. So if Beautiful. we had to go back to our ray trace view again. Mm hmm. You've got these cute little creases on your on your mm -hmm. letters, and uh, same treatment. Um, and again, you can uh, so on the R, it's pretty much just on the inside over there. Um, but if I wanted to, for instance, do it over here, um, and here. and do another hard crease and again I'm just going to there we go very cute huh oh my god um, it's, uh, mm -hmm. it's same it, thing mm -hmm. it, say, say. It, it really looks like a balloon yeah it's amazing and on the edge, I think it's uh, the edge. You don't really see it much. On the edge, it's actually in the middle here. So in the edge, you could just we can just subdivide again a few times, and you can select well. And we select the center, and we go the hot crease, and we just wow. there we go. Mm -hmm. so the the same way you'd go about doing the rest of your letters. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, uh, we we 
don't want to 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 make this a two hour long tutorial so we're not going <laughs> to do it with every single letter but the same treatment you just subdivide and uh, depending on how much detail you want in the letter um you you subdivide to to that that amount and you can just use the crease and the and the scaling and the moving tool to create that 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 creased look that um and so I'm just going to do the same here. That's See, this something like this cannot be done in a Rhino modeling. Yeah, to just uh, add. Uh, well, I mean, I don't know. Maybe you can make some object to uh, bring on difference or something. But this looks more natural, definitely. And see how we would do it with it with the eye here. Here we go. Because the eyes, the eye, the, the, the subdivisions on the eye just they look they look slightly different to mm. so crease here again. Oh, here we go. And just super. Yeah, and then we have a little rim around the outside of our balloons, but this little skirt, and the skirt is very simple to make. Um, you start by going back to Rhino. This is where we're going to exit sub D tools, and um, you use the section section tool. Mm -hmm. uh, of Rhino in your uh, curves from from surfaces. Um, I'm just going to go back into curves again, and I'm going to draw a section through my R, through the center, and I have a curve here. Yeah, brilliant. Yeah, I know. Section command is a uh, lifesaver. Yeah, it is. This is for sure. I'm going to change the object layer so I don't get it confused. I, I like to work in colors, especially when I'm using curves. Um, I'm, I get confused, unfortunately, very easily. And then I do a little offset of that tool. Um, distance not too far, uh, 0 0.2 or... I wonder if 0 0.2 is enough, maybe make it 0 0.3. And now I have a, a little outline um, with which I am going to, first of all, clean. Clean up the contour points. Yeah. Um, oh there. I'm just exploding this curve. Mm. I can cut it. Is it possible to explode? Yes. Okay. So we will clean that up. In fact, um, Ignore what I'm doing. This this inside curve is actually not even necessary. Now that I think about it, you can even delete that inside curve. You just need the outside curve here because what you're going to do with this outside curve is you're going to create a tiny little um, line. I have a just create a line here um, from the outside in. Just planner, a planner curve. Mm -hmm. We make that let's make that a, a 3.5 millimeter line. Uh, not yeah, 3.5. Yes. Three, no, not 3.5, sorry. A point, point three five. Yeah. Three five, exactly. Thank you, Akia. Um now I made it 35. So <laughs> point three five. Here we go. And it's just a little planar curve. 
uh, the reason I'm making that little plan out curve is you, you'll see in a moment. If I take this R and I sweep one rail and I use that line curve, I have a I have a little brim, a little frame around the object. You can untrim mitres to get rid of problems like that on your on your on your sweep. Um you can always rebuild if you need to as well. Uh and now on the main curve, there we go. <laughs> Switch those points on. I'm going to lift a few of the points on that curve that we just did a sweep on. Mm. Okay. So can actually delete this. I'm going to lift a few more points. And all around it, no? Yeah, I, I would do it. I would do it all around, like a little skirt, mm. like little frills. But just slightly, just a bit like that. So it's just a little bit lifted. Mm -hmm. And you can go ahead and do that sweep again. And then you've got this. Yeah, brilliant. Uh, yeah. Now, I forgot to do the untrim. Uh, I forgot to do the mitres. Uh, again, untrimmed mitres. Oh, it's still giving trouble here. It's too, too complex. Ah. Maybe you want to rebuild the curve a little bit? No? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Good idea. Although it's it's not the curve really. It's it's the oh. it's the length. It's the length of the of the, 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 the it's the length of the oh it's the length of this curve over here that is the problem. Because it's um it's intersecting oh, 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 on I see. Yeah. It's intersecting on itself. So uh Oh, no, no, wait. Akio, sorry, you're right. You always are right. I don't know why I argue with you. <laughs> sorry. Um, so let's delete that. Let's select a couple of curves here. A couple of points and a couple of curves. Mm -hmm. Don't have to get too complex. Mm. Okay. And now just lift those up tad. Mm -hmm. Point two of a millimeter. Maybe even too much. Love it a little bit. And do that sweep again. So, yeah. So you check the refit rail. That's what I usually check the refit rail curve. The what, what? Refit rail. Yeah. Mm. I think it's still too. Oh, I, I oh that's it, too much. Yeah. Too much. It's still too much. I can bring okay. those points down. Yeah. And I'm so spoiled because I'm used to having my Rhino history on now, in Rhino Seven, and I don't have it on at all in Rhino Eight. So now I'll have to redo, <laughs> redo the rail sweep rail. Oh. Yeah. I don't know if you have it on by default in. Rhino. No, you can. Oh yeah, I usually do Rhino that. Right, uh, history on all the time in the Rhino Eight. There we go. Yeah. No problem. Yeah. So usually, like a rebuild. If you, it's like a pipe comment too. When you do not the subdivide, the pipe gets little 
crazy thing. So rebuild will yeah usually solve the problem. I mean, it's a you know uh, you have to do a lot. It's like a two hundred twenty five. So it's like a you, yeah even two hundred twenty five. Uh, I, yeah, I usually start a little, little bit less. Mm -hmm. the, the point count of the original curve is usually where I start and then I, I go down from there afterwards. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, that should that should do. Yeah, that's okay. Okay. So sweet. Let's see. Voila, it looks good. Okay. Good. Coming at you. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. And now I just extrude that. Mm. Um, so extrude surface. surface. Uh -huh. Do you see my. There we go. Extruded by 0.3 of a millimeter. And. And do the same for the middle right so cute yep um wow amazing okay it's cute right yeah it is very yeah Good this idea. Little, yeah, the, the, the little brim is is um yeah that flare is uh yeah it looks like a little balloon. That's a nice it, touch. It's 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 very fine though, but mm -hmm. what's nice is if you do cast it, it might not cast exactly properly, which could even add to the to the the the, the, the effect of it. So exactly. um, that could even add to the look um and finally what we said was we just make a hole through the letter right to yes put the chain through right so um if for instance you had to have the word rhino on a chain um If we wanted to dangle the letters kind of like this or maybe more like that. Well, that's cute. I like, I love the randomness. <laughs> uh, it kind of adds to the balloony effect. Yeah, yes, yes, definitely. And just need to make sure just pipe this. Um, let's go with a diameter of about 1.2. Um, yeah, I don't know, a little bit more because a chain, I don't know, chain is, uh, um, but the letter is small, so I don't know. Point two is a too thick, but the chain is how much? Maybe two for the for yeah, the, two. Uh, the radius. Two, two for the hole, yeah. Yeah. Uh, not, no, oh, not Better. the hole. Oh, oh, you mean the hole? I mean radius yeah, or the hole? Oh no, diameter. Um. Uh, typically. No typically diameter what or radius? Chain use. Hey. No radius or diameter. Um, I'm using a diameter. Oh, diameter. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so what, what size chain do you usually use? Do you, do you like using best? Uh, I don't know. Um, yeah, point, like a point five or so maybe. So, um, what about you? So that the hole has to be a little bit larger than that. Or the point two millimeter was too big. No, the two millimeter works. Yeah. These so are yeah, so, so two will be okay. Yeah. 
then you I mean, could use it's a, it's a, it's a list well. yeah yeah it's a list list too or you can do uh larger too yeah but let's see too for this uh uh exercise yeah mm -hmm. okay that's working All you need to do is Boolean difference, yeah. Mm -hmm. Boolean difference. And it's going to change the nerves, right? Yeah. Yeah, it changes the sub D back to nerves. So you would have sub D. Uh, you would have sub D no longer. Um, also, one thing to consider is if the letters would be any bigger than this, for example, um, then you would probably want to hollow them out and not have them solid mm -hmm. so just so that they wouldn't be too heavy so that would be a different approach altogether exactly so here we've got uh i still have the original sub -Ds in my file let's have a look here still kept the original subdivision surfaces oh, I, see. I have not been working with rhino 8 that long mm -hmm. um i've uh, extensively so i'm still i still don't have the the layout completely set up like i'm used to in rhino yeah rhino in 8 gives you a lot of different options like a, a boolean delete input no so that you can have a you know original object and uh, output i also see something that when i boolean the h uh -huh. the n it no longer keeps that subdivision group that i had before it throws out the other two parts of the of the group so Probably best here would be to um, first boolean this all together, probably, huh? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Or convert to to a NURBS object. Yeah, so and then boolean. NURBS. Yeah. Well, if you boolean union, it will change it to the NURBS, I think, uh, automatically. Oh, what happened? Sub D. It. Mm -hmm. it Converted it to nerves, but it's it's not a it's a group. If I want to boolean it together, mm -hmm. uh, uh huh. So again, let's convert that to nerves. Need the sub D. It's now boolean the chain out. And yeah, okay, this is something to look into. I um you could just the boolean, boolean union that uh, sub D instead of converting, and it would automatically change it to the nerves nerve polysurface. Um, it does not. I, I it does not let me boolean it together. Oh no! Oh, because yeah, it's a not, group. No, it's a group. Oh, uh, it's group. a sub D grouped object. It's a sub D grouped object, but it's mm -hmm. not. It's not. Um, it's not joined. So you ungroup it in a Boolean union, maybe. Because a uh, rhino, you can, if you uh, objects are grouped, you have to ungroup it first. I, the, yeah. I, it doesn't ungroup. It's it's not ungrouping. It's, it's oh, not a rhino yeah. group object either. Um, yeah. It doesn't recognize it as a rhino grouped object. If I explode it, it explodes it into surfaces. Yeah. 
Oh, well, okay. So what I could do is I can select some of these surfaces and I can join them. And then later I can join back. Uh, then I can boolean difference or boolean union them together. So I'm just joining oh, okay. these separate surfaces, joining them, and now I'm going to boolean them together as runner object, runner object, runner nerves object. Now they now they've been boolean together, and now I can boolean difference the okay. chain. Mm -hmm. There we go. So now it's um. Now it's an object, a, a single object. So again, um, go and explode this object. Um, join the two parts. And the centerpiece. Boolean them together and Boolean the chain out. Okay, so that's something I also didn't know. That's new. Yeah. Um, so when you 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 have have objects in in sub D that are kind of grouped objects, you have to um you have to explode them and and if you want Boolean union them in runner, mm -hmm. they're not. Thank you for watching everyone. Uh, I hope you liked the today's uh, sub D exercise and uh, um, yeah, so smash the like button and uh, subscribe if you haven't so, uh, done so. And also uh, check out our book, The Essential Guide to Digital Jewelry Design. And um, if you would like us to uh, work on some particular uh, project, please leave a comment on your description below. And also, I um, uh, I I offer a sub D modeling uh, class time to time. So next start, uh, next class starts in May. So check it out. Uh, check it out with my uh, website. I'll be attending. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. So uh, yep. Okay.